Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Inspiration. Yeah, man wrote it down, but it came from God. Saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee in a book. Well, guess what you're holding? And you got to realize what we read previously in Jeremiah. There are false prophets out there who are speaking and writing. But they are not doing what Jeremiah is doing. Jeremiah is getting it from the word of God while they are getting it from the word of Satan. You say, well, how do I know the difference? you got to study the word. For lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah. Now, did that happen? Ezra and Nehemiah. Even though it did not happen in Jeremiah's time, is Jeremiah a false prophet? Absolutely not. There were prophets that spoke 48 prophecies in the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Were they all false prophets? Absolutely not. From the birth of Jesus to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then those prophets were made assured because it came from the word of God. There are yet prophecies to be fulfilled with the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, with the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, with the heavens, the new heavens, the new earth, new Jerusalem yet to come. So God's going to bring them back. Two times have they gone. Babylon's come and taken them. They're going to come back. We already learned 70 years. God's going to start working with them. I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers. <coughs> Preach that to the nine nations. Find every verse in the Bible that speaks about that land being the, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the twelve tribes of Israel. And show that to the Arabians. Show that to the PLO. Show you, show you that verses, these verses to the President of the United States. Show the verses to the Arabians and to the uh, people of the oil. God says that land is their land. So in America we have, this land is my land, this land is your land. Absolutely not. It belongs to God. And God has given the powers thereof right now to Satan. This ain't your land. Don't pay your taxes, your land taxes for five years and see how much it's your land. The government's land. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. Jews, not church. For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. Ye, ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with a child. Is that a question you need to be asked? Does a man give birth? No. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins? It's talking about pain and sickness. As a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. The other destruction that's going on, the captivity that's going on, all the penalties, all the evil, which is the consequences of sin, that's happening now and that will happen. Man's going to grab, oh! And you know, when God speaks about that great thing, and we're going to see Jacob's trouble, when he speaks about the tribulation period, when he speaks about as Babylon comes into Judah, he speaks about it as a woman giving birth to a child of great pain. The Bible says that is the greatest pain of all pains. And God likes it to his people going into captivity, of repenting, of getting right. And for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of the church. And, well, the church is not going through the tribulation. Even the time of uh, the Gentiles beating the Antichrist and getting rid of the mark. And No. Even the time of all the stupid uh, tribulation movies out there. Absolutely not. 
It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Listen, the only way a kingdom gets saved is their relationship to how they conduct themselves to the Jews, and they don't even know what they're doing to be saved. How's that? What do you mean, Lord, we're saved? Well, when do we take care of When do we visit you in prison? When do we feed you? When do we nurse you? When you took care of my people. Oh. But, ye, but he shall be saved out of it. Who? Jacob. For it shall come to pass in that day. No, it's in that day. Saith the Lord of hosts. That I will break his yoke. There's the yoke Jeremiah's been wearing. But it is a yoke of Jacob. Jews have their own yoke. What did Jesus tell the Jews? Take my yoke for it's easy. Cast your burdens upon me. You know, he really called the people, he called them an ass. What animal carries burdens? Donkeys. The Pharisees and Sadducees were putting such yokes and burdens on the people, but yet they put none on themselves. Serving the Lord is not a burden. It's not a yoke. But you can be tied up with Jesus in service and breaking of ground and planting seeds. But it's a joy. It's a wonder. It's great. Break off his yoke from off thy neck. And will burst thy bonds that's being chained, hands or feet or both. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. For they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up on them. We have jumped all the way over to the millennium. We have jumped to the tribulation period. We have escaped Babylon. Yet, but the Bible speaks about in, in the tribulation period, there is a Babylon. Mystery Babylon. So what you're reading in Jeremiah is going to happen again. Very few Jews are going to get saved. When we read the other night, I think it will be coming up pretty soon, about the numbers that were taken all three times. And that's not a very big number of Jews. In apparent how many Jews are in the land. A lot of Jews are going to be killed under the Antichrist. Few are going to be saved. And they're going to serve the Lord their God and David their king. Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob. Why? Because God's going to come and take care of you. Saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar. And thy seed from the land of thy captivity. They can read this in the tribulation period. And apply it to themselves. When they go to Salem Petra, they can pick up Jeremiah 30 and say, hey, he's speaking to us. I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Now that's Babylon. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest and be quiet and none shall make him afraid. Well, he was afraid of his brother. He was afraid of his father-in-law. I believe that's also the literal Jacob. I mean, if David's showing up, why not Jacob? Why not Abraham with his children? For I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations. America, Poland, Africa. I know it's a country with a lot of nations in Africa. Europe, Asia. Make a full end of all nations. There you go. But one nation will survive above all nations. Whether I have scattered thee. Now take this out. In 2010 and 2011, these numbers are plus or minus. The Jews are recorded in the United States, 129,000 of them. The UK, 11,000, 12,000. Russia, 157,000. This, this is numbers just roughly. Germany, you know, where they were killing them. 11,000. The Ukraine in 2001, 101,000 of them. Hungary, 1,000. Belgium, about 1,500. Poland, that's where Adolf Hitler was killing them, about 1,100. The Netherlands, about 1,400. They're all over the place. 
And God said, and these are just the major cities. I could have wrote them all down. These are just the major cities I found, some weird cities that, you know, I never heard of, that God knows because his Jews are there. And he says, all the world, I'm going to gather you back. Now imagine going to Jeremiah and say, you know, God's going to call the Jews back from whatever the, the Indians called this land. I don't know what they call it. I don't look that up. And say, I don't know what they call this land, but whatever name the Indians, the, the Native Americans called this land. You imagine them say, Jeremiah, the Jews are going to be called from New York. What's in New York? Well, they're going to be called from there. Okay. They're going to be called from Los Angeles. What's a Los Angeles? It's a city of angels. Ha, 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 ha. Sure. Right. Ha. Yet will I not make a full end of thee. He ain't never going to be done with the Jews. Never. But I will correct thee in measure. What's that? Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is when God is going to correct his people. Ouch. You read the book of Revelation? The seven vials, the seven plagues, the seven trumpets, the seven seals, the three woes. Those animals that are coming out, biting everybody. Everybody wish they could die. The, the seas turn. I mean, there's all the mess is going on. That's a big whap in the behind. You better not mess with God your father if you're saved. Jews, you better not mess with Lord Jehovah who is your God. Right now, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, or he will cast his people who do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ into the lake of fire for all eternity. But I'm your people. Yeah, but you have not done what God told you to do. Well, we go by the law. You still can't do what God told you to do. There's no temple. There's no brazen altar. There is no Ark of the Covenant. There is no high priest. There is no king. You can't possibly do what God told you to do. But you can possibly do what God told you to do. What are you talking about? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You can do what God told you to do, but you can't do what God told you to do. You can't bring the cows. You can't bring the calves. You can't bring the blood. But you can bring the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I will correct thee in, in measure and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Woohoo! What a punishment. For thus saith the Lord, thy bruise is incurable, and thy wound is grievous, chronic. Can't do nothing for you. You can't go to the wound clinic. It's not going to heal. And you got people like that today with third degree burns with, uh, uh, I'm going to say Alzheimer's, with uh, diabetes. You get people who get wounds that their body does not ever heal. They don't scab. They, they don't form the healing properties in their body. And it remains a sore. There is, a, there is none to plead thy cause. God told Jeremiah, don't pray for them. But God, he's sick. I don't care. Oh, Lord, I'm sick. I, got, I don't want to hear it. Shut up. That's not nice to say. That thou mayest be bound up. That means like bandage. That means, don't mean tied up. Thou hast no healing medicine. Now we've been talking about Jacob's trouble, haven't we? Haven't we been talking about the tribulation? We've talked about the millennium. Is it pro possible that in the tribulation period there will be no Obamacare because there will be no care at all? What happens when those, those insects with the scorpion tails bite you? You're going to want to seek you know, death. You're going to want to go to Jack Kevorkian. And you're not going to be able to die. You're not going to get relief. I think it's three or six months. I forget what it is. Once those things bite you. And the pain is so undesirable. You're going to seek death. And you're not going to get it. According to this verse. There's going to be no health care. Or they're not going to be able to do anything for you. You just imagine... All the pain and, and trouble that people are going through today, going into the tribulation period, no medication. I want, if you ever read that list over there that the Mystery Babylon holds gold, servants, souls, iron, cinnamon, and all that, 
Check that list out and see if there's any medications in that list. I think it's something to check out with this list. I wonder if there's any medications listed in that 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 grocery store uh, wall. You know, you go to a mark there of inventory. I wonder if there's any medicine. God says there's no healing medicine. That'd be interesting. I, I could be wrong. I mean, don't. I'm just taking what I'm reading, but it says. Thy, uh, there is no healing medicine. All thy lovers have forgotten thee, the Egyptians, the Edomites. Everyone who they ran to and gave money. Remember there was a time there was kings that would go up to the temple and scrape off the gold off the doors and pay people to protect them? They're not around. Solomon made love with all the nations around him with the women. He had the, the, the Pharaoh's daughter, and he had all the women of all the lands. Oh, this is so great. Where are they now? They seek thee not. We don't want anything to do with those Jews. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. Who did the wound? God did. Of an enemy. Wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. I told Babylon to do it. I told the Antichrist to do it. Why? Because you need a punishment. I allowed Satan to attack Job. How's that one? 42 chapters. 42 months. Only thing I told Satan, don't you kill him. Lord's serious when it comes to sin. And he's talking to me just as much as he's talking to anybody. Sin is so serious to God that he died on the cross for our sin. That's how serious it is. And if you reject what God has told you, have you seen what's going on? Have you studied the Bible to see what will happen? Do you know that if you reject the sin offering of Jesus Christ, you will burn in your sins forever paying to God what you should not be able to pay because Christ has already paid for it in a lake of fire. That is how serious God is to our sin. What is the sin of, uh, of, of Judah? Yeah, it's idolatry. Yes, they're lying prophets. Yeah, but the sin is they have violated the word of God. What caused Adam to be left out of the garden? He violated the commandment that God says, don't eat that fruit. He ate the fruit. Violation. What, did get, what got Moses into trouble? He smoked the rock. But what did God tell him? He told him to speak to the rock. And God said, okay, you didn't listen? You don't get to go in the promised land. Why is Israel in the troubles they're in right now? Because God told them, go in there and wipe them all out. Did they wipe them all out? No. So now they're, they're sinning. What is God telling you today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If you do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be saved. For I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy. With the chastisement of a cruel one. Hmm, I want reference that could be. Nebuchadnezzar got <clears throat> saved, as far as we can record in the Bible. Once he got right, you never heard from him again. I mean, yeah, he threw, he threw, uh, threw three, three Hebrew children into the fire, but then again, when he saw God, he pulled them out. Cruel one, for the multitude of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. Why criest thou for thy affliction? You deserve it. You deserve hell. Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquity. So not only is your wounds incurable, there is no, nothing, absolutely not a, a zero for your sorrow, for your depression. There are no pills. Now, I've never been in depression. I've had times where I've, you know, been upset or anything like that. And time really healed the wounds and 
I was given a couple things of medicine for it, and it, it healed up in time. But God says there will be none. Listen, if you're suffering a depression today, you ought to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and have uh, depression in the rest of your life and not be depressed for all eternity. Now, I'm not going to tell you if you get saved, your depression will end. But it'll end in eternity unless you go into hell. Then you'll have forever depression. Go ask that guy that's in hell, the rich one. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. I will curse them that curse thee. See, there is the promise of Abraham, Genesis chapter 12. And all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. Uh-oh. Babylon gets attacked by the Medes and the Persians. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. Ooh, wait till you see what, what God does with the Middle East. For all the land that they've taken. <laughs> and the, all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. I will give you your just desserts. I will give you what you do to my people. And I'll give it to you more. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that you shall also reap. And when you do it to my people, woo wait, you've been warned. Any nation, any ruler, any president, any king can read Genesis 12 and say, Nope, I'm going to leave them people alone, God. But I want you to go, No, God, you said you're going to curse them that curse thee. I'd rather have you find somebody else to do it. Okay. Didn't have to be Nebuchadnezzar. It didn't have to be. For I will restore health unto him. I thought it was incurable. I thought the wages of sin is death. Oh, I didn't finish that verse, did I? The wages of sin is death, incurable, uh, uh, terminal. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You can have something that Satan or any man can't take care of, but when God steps in, I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. What did he just say? He said, thy bruise is incurable, thy wounds are green, you're chronic, but guess what? I can take care of you. Shall, what is it, shall nothing be impossible for God? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Because they called thee an outcast, a capital O, saying, this is Zion. Whom no man seeketh after. Who wants that piece of land? Well, they're sure fighting it over today. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents. Wouldn't it be great in, in the millennium that it's all tent dwellers and no houses, no apartment buildings? Doesn't there say, in one, one of the prophets say, Won't them that build house to house, apartment buildings? I know somebody that I really care about would love to dwell in the tents. Tent, I mean, I mean, you get a hole. In it, I mean, it's really not that much uh, maintenance for a tent. And if it goes really bad, you just, I guess you fold it up and you can buy a new one. Or you just go see Paul, the tent maker. <laughs> And have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be builded upon her own heaps. Now when you see on a map something called Tel, T-E-L, like Tel Aviv, that is a city that has been built upon a heap. Tel means heap. And what happens is they build a city, it gets destroyed. They come in and put some dirt on that thing and they build another city. And that gets destroyed, and with wind and dust and sandstorm, it gets another foundation. They come on building another city. And what you may do is you may have several cities on one little heap. And that's what it's talking about here. You go over there right now, you find a whole bunch of heaps. What are those heaps? Those are past cities. And that's where archaeologists dig. 
How did God know that? Why did they call him tell, which it means he? They could call him anything. Man ain't holes. No, they call them exactly what the Bible says. They're going to build upon the heaps. They're going to get the archaeologists all upset. Again, no, we got to dig here. And the place shall remain after the manner thereof. Well, Ezra and Nehemiah come in and build what? Upon the heap. Isn't that what, how Nehemiah described? I took my donkey for a walk and threw. There's a big garbage junkyard out there. I couldn't even get through with my donkey, and I couldn't even get through. And what did they do? It was reported they built the gates, they built the walls, they built the corners, they built the towers, and all everything. Jeremiah is a prophet that came to be. Imagine Ezra and Nehemiah. Isn't there something about what you're doing, Nehemiah? What do you mean? You just took that heap and built a wall, and yeah. Some one of those prophets says something about the heap. I think it was Jeremiah. Oh, okay. Yep. And the powers shall remain after the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and football games and a lot of big fat food and, and making yourself a pig in America. And the next day waking up and spending all night at the store to buy electronic. No, it's not the Thanksgiving of the Bible. You know, George Washington wanted Thanksgiving the praise of God. How did you get it from a pigskin to going and buying stuff you can't afford? Why is it only one day a year? Should, doesn't the Bible say this is the day the Lord has made? Let us give thanks and rejoice in it. That day is every day that we wake up. Every day should be a Thanksgiving. What happened in Ezra and Nehemiah's time? They rejoice. Jeremiah is a prophet of the Lord. The prophecy happened. There was one group of people, man, they were shouting, Amen, glory, hallelujah, the ones they were crying, you know, I just remember the old glory. But they were happy. Here's that city. It wasn't like it was, but here it is again. And it's been over the 70 years. So God is right. And the voice and then that make merry. And I will multiply them. I'm not gonna give them a math test, they're gonna have children. And they're going to have sons and daughters, and they're going to marry, and they're going to have more sons and daughters, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. Oh. Huh. There'll be a lot of Jews running around. I would sure hate to be a skinhead. I sure hate to be a Nazi. I sure hate to be any of the American religions that say the Jewish people are not anybody, because God says, I'm going to fill the land with them. You're going to see brown-skinned people all over the place. They're God's people. John chapter 1 said they are Jesus' brethren. Now I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. I don't know what that small means, because they are small. It's recorded that, that Saul, a characteristic was him. he was a tall person. The Jews are pretty small. Now, does that mean statue, or does that mean is that the population? I don't know. Their children also shall be as aforetime, and their congregation shall be established before me. Before me, that's Jesus Christ sitting on the throne of David, all sitting before him. You know, like when they brought the children unto him, bouncing them on his knee? He do that again, Jesus. <laughs> He's going to be having the people before him listening to him, and they're not going to try to kick him out and pass him over the brow of his hill. They're not going to yell, crucify him. And they're going to stand in awe like they did when he preached the message. And they, they just magnified it. He spoke not as the scribes of Pharisees. That's exactly what's going to happen in the millennium. Man, that Jesus speaks wonderful. And the birds hush their singing. And I will punish all that oppress them. You want to write President Obama about two things that are very important? Yeah, he ought to get out of the White House. No. He's doing a terrible job. No. You need to write President Obama about two things. He needs to be born again. He needs to be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he needs to defend and protect and take care of that Jew. That's the only two commands you should give the President of the United States. 
If he does those two things, he's going to do well. If he does those two things, he's going to do what no other president has ever done. And their nobles shall be of themselves, and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. Like the law said. You're going to have a ruler that's a Jewish person. Having Caesar as your ruler, we'll have no God but Caesar, is a violation of the scripture. They were supposed to call upon Jesus. The Messiah. I will cause him to draw near and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engaged his heart to approach, to approach unto me, saith the Lord? And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God, the Jews. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goes forth with fury. You ever see the aftermath of a tornado? Did you know what, how God spoke to Job before the end of the book Job ended? Check it out. He told his three friends there. Yeah, check their nationality. I wonder if they were, what their nationalities were. Uh, a continuing whirlwind. Who's going to stop it? It shall fall with the pain upon the head of the wicked. Now, who do you think that one is? The Bible tells you exactly who that is. The fear, I don't think uh, Nebuchadnezzar got a head wound. Can't be Nebuchadnezzar. I don't think Belshazzar got a head wound. It says he died in the middle of the night. Who's going to get a head wound in the Bible? From God. Uh-huh. Hope you studied the Bible. Hope you know the answer. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return. Look at that. God is never going to do the tribulation period again. There will never be a Jacob's trouble ever again. Until he has done it. And until he has performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days. Ye shall consider. In the latter days, you're going to think about Jeremiah chapter 30. You're going to think about, in the tribulation period, you're going to think about chapter 30. And chapter 30 is going to bring you to repent and cry for God to save you a Savior. And then one day God's going to say, Woo -hoo, mount up, let's go. Go get him. King of kings and Lord of lords, here he comes. And he'll be rejoicing and gladness and Satan will be grabbed and locked up. The Antichrist and the false prophet will be cast in the lake of fire. There you go.